Death at Bishop's Keep, Chapter 35 We never know what's hidden in each other's hearts, and if we had glass winders there, we'd need to keep the shutters up, some on us, I do assure you. Charles Dickens, Martin Chuzzlewit Mrs. Pratt was presiding over the last moments of staff breakfast when Miss Ardley and the young miss came into the servants' hall. Seeing them, she stood up. The rest of the servants hastily followed suit, pushing back their chairs, their faces carefully bland, only their eyes registering surprise. Miss Ardley had never appeared in the servants' hall in their time here, and even Mrs. Pratt had difficulty recalling when she had last been below stairs, certainly not since the advent of Jaggers. Mutt spoke. If you come about the constable, Mum, Pog had already been and back again. I have not, but thank you, Mutt, Miss Ardley said. Mrs. Pratt saw her glance on the, at the plates of toast and egg and a bit of boiled streaky bacon. Harriet and Nettie were particularly partial to the bacon, which they did not often have. It was Mrs. Pratt's efforts to make a good amends for Jagger's ill treatment. Have we interrupted your meal? No, Mum, Mrs. Pratt lied. She held her face emotionless, but inside she was angrily resentful. Couldn't they sit down to a meal, plain and parsimonious as it was, without being intruded upon? A lengthy interruption would mean cold food and poor spirits for the rest of the morning. Work was hard enough without that. Do you wish to speak to... Uh, to all of you, actually, Miss Artley replied evenly. I have come to apologize both on my own behalf and that of my sister. Apologize? Miss Pratt stared. Mutt was stunned into speechlessness. Amelia and Pocket were gaping like codfish, and Harriet made a small sound, almost a whimper. Nettie wrung her hands. Clearly, it was up to Mrs. Pratt to reply. Apology ain't necessary, Mum, she said, looking back at Miss Artley with narrowed eyes. Apologize? What mistress ever apologized to a servant? It wasn't in the nature of things. I fear that it is necessary, Miss Artley said. Even though my words are embarrassing to me and perhaps to you, I find that I must resume management of the household. It is clear to me now, and should have been before this, that my sister is ill-suited to the task of mistress for yielding up my responsibilities without considering the possible consequences for all of us. I apologize. For her abuse of your rights, I most sincerely apologize. Oh, Mum! Harriet burst out passionately and then bit her lip with a sideways glance at Cook. Mrs. Pratt gave the girl a cold stare, but it was Mrs. Ardley she was angry with. Did she think that by sweeping in here like the Queen herself and dosing them with a spoonful of sweet talk, that she could change what had happened, not just last evening, but last spring, when Jenny was turned out? Did she think she could win them over, could erase the memory of those terrible hurts with an easy smile or two? Well, there was more in Mrs. Pratt's heart and mind than Miss Ardley knew, if that was what she saw, thought. From now on, Miss Hartley said, you are to take your direction from me. She looked around at the cheerless room, the cold stone floor, the fireplace absent of fire. We will begin by restoring the furnishing to this room. Where were they taken? To... to the attic, Mum, Miss Pratt said, blinking. Good, Miss Hartley replied. Please have them returned, and the carpet, and see if another chair or two can be found. She shivered, and unblock that fireplace. It is far too cold in this room to comfortably enjoy your leisure, leisure hours here. Mrs. Pratt allowed herself a small flare of triumph at the thought of the return of the sofa, while Harriet and Nettie seemed nearly overwhelmed with the prospect of a restored fire and a carpet. Pocket shifted his feet, grinning. Miss Ardley continued. Cook, my sister clearly exceeded her authority yesterday when she requested your notice. I do hope you will consent to remain with us. Mrs. Pratt swallowed. The situation which had boggled the brain to start with was becoming curiouser and curiouser. That is settled then, Aunt Sabrina said. She smiled. You and I will meet this morning to discuss meals, pantry stores, and so forth, and you will acquaint me w with any new procedures you will have instituted for managing the kitchen. But you will please inform me about the current state of the household accounts, the distribution of responsibilities amongst the upstairs help, and the state of the grounds. Mrs. Pratt saw Mud's eyebrows shoot up. He opened his mouth to speak, but she gave him the slightest shake of her head, and he closed his mouth again. Miss Ardley regarded him curiously for a moment. When he said nothing, she looked around the table, her eyes resting on each one in turn. In the meantime, she said, I hope that each of you will accept my thanks for your patience and forbearance. Our household can only run smoothly if we all do our proper parts. I will do mine, I assure you. That was too much for Amelia. 
Bless you, Mum, she said fervently. Miss Pratt cleared her throat sternly, and Amelia had the, the grace to blush. She was always a forward chit, giving herself airs, putting herself above her station. But even Nettie looked as if she were about ready to dance, and Pocket's grin fair split his face tw in twine. Mrs. Pratt supposed that the younger ones couldn't be blamed for being bamboozled. She herself had heard similar promises before, although not to the extent of returning the fire and the sofa. After the sad business with Jenny, Miss Ardley had personally promised that she would rein in Jaggers. But nothing had come of it then, and Mrs. Pratt wasn't going to hold her breath until something came of it now. Anyway, Miss Pratt reminded herself murderously it was Jaggers who should be here apologizing, and not the mistress. Miss Ardley smiled. That will be all then, she said. We will have guests for lunch on Cook, an additional four, I believe. Please see me, she unclipped her watch and consulted it, in the library an hour from now, with suggestions from the, for the menu. Gathering up her skirt, she swept from the room, her knees behind. The other servants finished the cold breakfast and left to be about their work, chattering about the prospect of increased daily rations and the exciting prospect, although Miss Ardley had not mentioned it, of being released from compulsory prayers. Only Mrs. Pratt and Mott were left staring at one another from opposite ends of the table. There was a long silence. She'll have to be told about the accounts, Mott said. He shook his head with a dark look. She's not going to be happy, and Jaggers is like to be furious. Let her be, pray Mrs. Pratt said, bleakly smug. Let her get what's coming to her for diddling, little enough after what she's done. Mrs. Pratt and Mott had suspected for some months that Jaggers was manipulating the household accounts. But it was only in the last few days that Mutt had confirmed their suspicions through some adroit backward checking. I figure she knows we're about the accounts anyway, she added, draining her coffee. That's why she's come on so sharp yesterday, threatening to sack me. Left to herself, Mutt, you'd be next to go after me. What do you suppose has to come, come over the mistress taking things into her own hands? Mutt asked. Reflectively, he ate the last crust of toast. Do you think there'll be jam on the table and beer now she's running the manor again? Don't know, Miss Pratt said blackly, and don't care. A bit of jam won't heal what's hurt. She banged her cup on the saucer. She could not help herself. Unchristian as it was, a poisonous rage, bitter as bile, rose inside her when she thought about Jaggers. Mud was thoughtful. Not to put a fine point on it, Mrs. P, but ain't it time to turn the other cheek? Jam and fire don't go far with me, Mrs. Pratt said, from the depth of her wounded spirit. Who knows what's hidden in Miss Adlai's heart? She didn't raise a hand to help poor Jenny, nor even offered to help her find a place which she could have done. Mud stood up. Well, I, for one, he announced, am ready to let bygones be bygones. Mrs. Pratt glared at him. Fine for ye, Mud, but for me, Miss Adlai is as guilty as Jaggers. Both of them deserve whatever they get. I only hope it can be me what dishes it out.